Hi, my name is Jamie Dunnett, and I'm here to help you with advice about how to get the maximum benefit health-wise out of your skill toy practice. Today's tutorial focuses mainly on poi, but can also be applied to a wide variety of skill toy activities. It is in my opinion that skill toys have a tremendous benefit to help people with their health and fitness of their body. Earlier on this year, I went onto the internet to ask skill toy artists about some of their experiences with injuries relating to their skill toy practice. A lot of the responses came back that people had actually healed existing injuries through their skill toy practice. However, a lot of the responses were also of injuries that came about as a result of their skill toy practice. And it is in my opinion that sadly most of these injuries are preventable. To me, um, skill toy practice um, can help to strengthen the stabilizer muscles of the shoulder. So the rotator cuff muscles can be strengthened through skill toy practice. Some stability exercises that we do in physiotherapy is to get a, a ball and roll it against the wall because you're moving your arm, you're moving your shoulder in various positions but you have to keep the ball stable on the wall. So this forces your shoulder to, to, to be very stable in order to control this movement and skill toys are the same. In order to accurately spin your skill toy in the way you want it to go, your shoulder has to be very stable and this will carry over to other areas of your life. Skill toy practice has potential to be a very important part of rehab for things like stabilizing a shoulder. If an injury occurs in the shoulder, once the acute, the inflammation, the pain has been reduced, then what we do in physiotherapy is we focus on, on stabilizing the joint to assure that the injury won't happen again. And I really feel that if poi is done properly or if staff is done properly, then it can be an excellent exercise to strengthen the rotator cuff muscles and gain stability and therefore prevent injury of the shoulder in the future. The stability of the joint is dependent on the length of the muscle as it's able to produce the contraction. So in a shortened position, if we bend our wrist um, over like this, try and pinch the tip of your middle finger to the palm of your hand with your wrist bent like this and see how little force you can produce with that finger. The reason is that the muscle that controls this finger is in this part of your forearm. So when your wrist is bent like this, it's actually too short to produce the force that it, it wants to, to produce the force that it potentially can. It's the same thing. If you stretch this muscle out too much, it's quite difficult to pinch the tip of your middle finger against the palm of your hand in this position as well. These muscles in your forearm at this point are lengthened, they're stretched out. So if you compare these two positions to having it right in the middle, you can see the amount of force produced by your fingers pinching into your palm is much greater when your wrist is in a neutral position. This is because these muscles are at a good length tension relationship. The length the stretch on these muscles is appropriate to, for, to produce maximum force in this position. So the shoulder is a really good example of a, of a ball and socket joint. So imagine this is my arm bone. The shoulder has a sort of a, a semicircular capsule and, and the arm bone fits into the semicircular capsule like this. And then there are various ligaments. There's a capsular sheath. Um, and then actually 17 muscles that come and feed in and help the shoulder to move. Um, the ones that we're concerned with, the ones that are most frequently injured during skill toy practice uh, are the rotator cuff. And the job of the rotator cuff is to hold the head of the humerus, which is the arm bone, in a good stable position in the head, in the socket of the shoulder joint while the arm moves. So they have a very, very important role. And so if their length tension relationship is compromised by awkward positions of the shoulder, let's say, 
um, then they're unable to perform their duty. At this point, the, instead of smoothly moving in the socket, the head of the arm bone will start to move into awkward positions. And it'll start rubbing soft tissue up against bony parts of the shoulder. Um, some very common injuries in skill toy practice are tendonitis, um, especially supraspinatus uh, tendonitis, and that's when a tendon that runs just over the top of the arm bone gets pinched up against a bony prominence that lies just above it. And that's again because the head of the arm bone isn't stabilized by the rotator cuff. So it comes in and, and pinches off the, the tendon of supraspinatus into that bony prominence. So in this position, Nick's arm is at the end of two available ranges. The first one is his external rotation, which only goes to about here. The second one is his horizontal extension, which only goes to about here. So having the arm in this position, he's very close to the end of his range in both of these available ranges of the body. So at the end of range, the stabilizing muscles of the joint, in this case the shoulder, are less able to perform their stabilizing duty because the length tension relationship is compromised in this position. The muscles in the front of the shoulder are on a stretch position whereas the muscles at the back of the shoulder are at a very short position. Muscles in a long position or in a short position are nearly as able to perform their stability role as ones that are in a more middle position, like this. This position is more stable because the muscles acting to stabilize the shoulder uh, are in a better position to perform their role. So, the body can go to various ends of ranges. It can go all the way up here. That's the end of his abduction range. Um, it can go back here. This is the end of his extension range. It can go up this way. This is the end of his flexion range. It doesn't actually matter which range you go to the end of. In any of these shoulder range of motions, the rotator cuff muscles will be in a compromised position and will be less able to stabilize the head of the arm bone in the shoulder socket. The end of range, however, can be a safe position for the shoulder, provided that the stabilizing muscles of the shoulder, the rotator cuff muscles, are able to perform their role. And they can be trained to do so through stretching and through strengthening. You just have to be prepared to give your body a chance to accommodate, to be able to keep your shoulder stable in the end of range position in order to prevent the injury from happening. One of the best ways to avoid injury is to properly warm up your body before you practice. This should be done first, even before stretching. Warming up the body allows the body's core temperature to increase. Um, as the body's core temperature rises, the temperature within the muscles of the body um, also rises. This increases the elasticity within the muscle. This allows the muscle to stretch more. It also generally gives more blood flow to the muscle, which allows the muscle to perform its very important duties needed in skill toy practice. So start with movements that keep the body in the most stable position. If possible, get your torso and legs involved. This will get your heart working. Note that warming up can be an excellent opportunity to also practice fine motor control. The signal coming down from your brain to certain muscles becomes warmed up just as the muscle itself does. As you get more warmed up, vary the height and the position of your arms, your elbows, your wrists, and your torso, slowly taking yourself through all the positions you are likely to use during your practice or performance. So slowly, you can progress into more extreme ranges of motion, but only as your body begins to warm up. You will notice your body has begun to warm up when the temperature of the body rises. You may begin to sweat just a little bit, depending on how cold the atmosphere temperature is. 
Um, if you feel a little bit of sweat coming from your body, you feel your heart rate has increased, you're breathing a little bit more heavily, you feel that your body temperature is warmer, this indicates you're really warming up. And this is a good point in time to explore those more extreme ranges of motion that are also very important to warm up for the neuromuscular control of the stability muscles that we were talking about earlier on. So taking it into those more extreme ranges, Nick, that you are likely to be using during your poi routine today, some of those behind the back, really stretching the, the shoulder ligaments and muscle tendons, that's right. Notice how Nick is going through this warm up very slowly. He's not doing any sudden quick movements. Also the poi are not spinning particularly quickly in his hand either. And this allows those extreme ranges to be explored without damaging the tissues that are involved in supporting the body in those ranges. So whole arm rotations are an excellent way to warm up the shoulders, arms, and trunk provided that you go into them slowly and gently, preferably near the end of your warm-up, and that you are cautious of overextending your shoulders in any extreme position. Note that by adequately turning your trunk, you can reduce the strain on your shoulders. Your shoulders can stay in a more stable position as your trunk moves. You're less likely to go into those extreme ranges of motion, those unstable positions where injuries occur. So warming up your torso is also a very important component of Nick's Poi warm-up. So warm up for at least five minutes or until you feel that your muscles are activated and awake, that your heart rate is up, you're breathing a little bit faster, and that you feel your core temperature has risen slightly. This is a good indication that you have warmed up and that your body will be ready for the next component of the preparation for your routine, which is stretching. Nick, do you feel like your body is warmed up now? Super, let's get on with the stretching. So today we will cover some specific stretches that will loosen up the major muscle groups in the shoulders and the wrists. These stretches are just to get you started. You may need to learn other stretches suited to your own particular needs. And your local healthcare practitioner can advise you more on that. We always want to stretch a muscle for at least 30 seconds. Scientific research has shown that a muscle doesn't actually gain length that it will maintain unless it's stretched for more than 30 seconds. So when you're warming up, when you're stretching, it is important to stretch for more than 30 seconds with each muscle in order to actually increase the length of the muscle, increase your flexibility, and increase the available range that you have to perform your skilled toy activities. The second very important concept in stretching is to breathe. Remember to breathe. Breathing allows maximum amount of oxygen to come into your body. It also helps, in my mind, to relax you. If you focus on your breath, you are able to calm yourself down. If your body is relaxed, there will be less tension in your muscle and you will be able to get more of a pure stretch of the entire muscle. It is also likely that if you're relaxed while you're stretching, you're more likely to enjoy the experience and you're more likely to actually do the stretching if you've enjoyed the experience. A lot of repetitive strain injuries happen when the body becomes fatigued. The muscles get tired and stop doing their job that protects you. So if you relax, your muscles won't get as fatigued. Movements will have less resistance you will be able to practice for a longer period with stronger muscles. We advise finding a coach to help you develop very specific stretches. Someone who's familiar with body mechanics. 
Remember, the body has an incredible ability to adapt to all kinds of stresses. The key is to give your body the time it needs to develop the strength and flexibility required to perform any given movement. So don't look at somebody who has been practicing a move with a skill toy for years and years and compare your practice schedule to them. Their muscles have had a chance to adapt to that particular move, to this particular intensity of practice. Their muscles are at a different stage in their development than yours. Another way to reduce the chances of injury is to become aware of the most unstable positions of your practice and either make them less unstable or use an appropriate strategy to minimize any chance of injury. So let's look at a typical windmill as an example. In this demonstration, Nick's arms are bent up and back pretty much as far as they will go. This is a very troublesome position, as was explained earlier as the stabilizing muscles of the shoulder have a difficult time controlling the head of the arm bone and this can easily cause the bone to move around and rub some of the soft tissue structures that are supporting the shoulder and lead to an injury. If you can, find a way to come slightly out of that end of range. Try bringing your elbows forward a little bit. Yeah, exactly, just like that. Now see how the shoulders have dropped? He is still able to do the same basic pattern, but his shoulders are in a much more stable position, and the stable, therefore the stabilizing muscles are more able to perform their function. This will make a big difference, especially in long spinning sessions. The behind the back pattern is another great example of an extremely unstable position used frequently by skill toy artists. A really good way to come out of that extreme unstable end of range position is for Nick to rotate his body slightly from his trunk as he's doing the movement. This way his arms won't have to go and reach quite as far as they did before putting the stretch on the rotator cuff muscles and decreasing the stability and increasing his injury risk. So moving his trunk like this will greatly, greatly, greatly decrease his chances of injuring his shoulder. So now Nick is changing to another variation of the same pattern. In this example, the whole point of the pattern from his point of view is to keep the body as still as possible. So it is difficult for him to make it a less extreme position, less close to the end of range. What he can do if he wants to practice these kinds of movements is to increase his actual range of motion through the stretching exercises that we demonstrated earlier. If he regularly stretches after warming up, and following all the other safety guidelines, he will become more flexible, so that pattern won't be done in such an extreme end of range position. He's observing the position that he wants his shoulder to be in to perform the movement, not to the point where he feels painful, just to the point where he feels that tension, that slight discomfort. This is increasing the range that he will need in order to perform that rather difficult end of range move that he just demonstrated earlier. So, Nick is currently recovering from a shoulder injury. He probably hurt his shoulder by spending too much time practicing his compound circles in an awkward manner like this. The problem that he's pra is that he's practically dislocated his shoulder and now he's trying to move it in a very vigorous manner with probably very few stabilizing muscles properly engaged. But look, so here, if Nick just makes a minor adjustment like this, just a very minor adjustment, his shoulder really drops back into a more stable place. His rotator cuff muscles are more able to perform their duty and keep that head of the arm bone in the shoulder socket where it's not moving around and pinching against any of the soft tissue structures.
Nick should still be very smart about how he practices this type of movement by warming up and stretching, as we've already explained. But that adjustment that he just made from that extremely awkward range into that slightly more comfortable, stable position is certainly a step in the right direction. So how you grip your skill toy is going to have a major effect on how your practice affects your body. For example, many poi spinners use a grip that is attached to the back of their hands. This is fine for many movements and patterns, but for behind the back moves, it encourages bending the wrist to an extreme end of range position. This can lead to an insufficient length tension relationship of the muscles that are controlling his wrist. Um, it can lead to certain tendons and soft tissue structures being rubbed up repeatedly against bony structures in around his wrist. And this will cause the structures to flare up and the pain to develop. So Nick was having trouble with his wrist a couple of years ago, most likely due to his keyboard and computer mouse. But he decided to change his poi spinning grip as well. He switched to a grip like this, to the palm of his hand. This allows him to go behind his back while keeping a more stable position of his wrist. The muscles that control Nick's hand and Nick's fingers are at a better relationship to not only produce force, but they're less likely to be rubbed up against the bony structures of his hand. For many skill toys, there are no finger loops. The skill toy artist must grip the toy throughout the practice. In general, you want to avoid prolonged or intense gripping or pinching. This can lead to problems as the muscles won't have time to relax. To help avoid tendonitis, tennis elbow, and other problems, introduce variety. Come up with a few different grips that work and vary between them. Each grip will put a slightly different force through your forearm muscles, which will allow some of the muscles to be active and some of the muscles to relax. Even the, the tension with which he's squeezing the, the particular toy that he's using. In general, a good grip will allow you to spend more time in a neutral position and less time in the end of range, unstable positions. This tutorial has been meant to provide you with some general ideas with how to protect yourself from injury. It is no substitute for professional advice. So if you develop an injury or have any concerns about your health, we recommend that you see a physiotherapist or some other healthcare professional in your community and discuss with them um, your concerns and they can advise you on the best way to proceed with, with the problem. It'll be much easier to deal with an injury right as it's coming on, right as it's at the beginning, rather than waiting for it to become a serious problem before addressing it. Also, I highly recommend that if you do visit a healthcare professional, bring your skill toys in with you. You want to show them the position that you're in that's making this injury flare up. You want to show them the toy you're using. You want to show them some of the other moves that you're doing in order that they can fully understand the activities that your body is going through that has likely caused this injury to come on. So bring the toys in with you, show them, even if they don't ask, show them. Because likely they won't know what the heck you're talking about with your skill toys. So it'll be a chance for them to learn, but they'll better be able to diagnose your problem once they have a clear picture of what you've been doing to injure yourself. That's it for the script.